Scene four, take one. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Little and I am a visual artist. I make work solely with this material, so just artist canvas. I live in Los Angeles, but I was born in Northern Ireland in County Down on a farm. Moved to Belfast, studied furniture design at art school in Belfast. Lived in London for many years, studied even more furniture design. Lived in Milan for a few years, working as a designer. And then I came to the Bay Area 21 years ago to teach design. And I have slowly, over the years, become an artist. So I'm no longer designing furniture. If you saw my furniture and you saw my art that I'm making today, you would know it was the same person. So there's a nice continuation between one and the other. In 2014, I was living in Connecticut, designing and making furniture. I used to come back to the Bay Area and be so heartbroken that I had left California. So Peter, my husband and I, we decided to move here and I started to talk to furniture people in the business here in Los Angeles and the general vibe was that my furniture wasn't design, it was more art. And I even had one friend in the furniture business repeatedly tell me, Mary, you're not a designer, you're an artist. Start to think about yourself as an artist. And I was really ready at that time in my life to make a change. So I took six months to get to know the galleries, also get to know interior designers because th they help place a lot of work and they know, they know a lot about art. And I spent a lot of time in the studio experimenting with artist canvas. And within six months, I'd made a new body of work that was purely art. I'm in a live work loft space with very high ceilings. So I put it on my, on my walls and invited the 50 people that I knew in LA to come and see it. And I've continued from there. So I make two bodies of work a year. Um, and it's always on a theme. This theme was double, double layers. Previous theme was lineage. And that related to the fact that one body of work leads to another, to another. So there's an evolution. And that evolution is really important to me. So that, that's the way I work. I, I make two bodies of work a year and then and engage with people as much as possible throughout that time. So I sell the work so I can continue to work so that I can afford to have really beautiful spaces like this. <laughs> I have invited Emer and Megan in today to um, perform in my space and to perform with my work. And I've really loved the way that Megan has performed with it. Mm -hmm. The work that's on the walls, it's a series called Double, mm -hmm. is double layered. She's interacted with it and gone inside it. And that was something that was completely unexpected to me and I, I really enjoyed it. I grew up in the most beautiful part of the world. I and mean, even as a young child, I knew it was really special. A lot of the land in Ireland is very soft. It's created by one of the ice ages retreating over the land. And as it retreats over the land, it, it wears the land away. So you'll see a lot of boulders. So big rounded rock forms, some of the boulders are 20 feet high or more. And I grew up on an, uh, the Ards Peninsula, which is a peninsula that's three miles wide. On one side is, was my mother's family and the other side was my father's family. We were always going across from one to the other. So the boulders within the Strangford Loch on one side on the beach. And on the other was the Irish Sea facing onto England and Scotland. 
And that was long, long sandy beaches, just beautiful sandy beaches that we would play in in the summer. There's just a really gentle, soft sensibility to the landscape, and that's what comes out in my work. The thing that comes from Southern California is the colouring, muted, soft colours where um, you, you could go out into the desert and look at, look at maybe 12 inches by 12 inches. It doesn't look colourful, but when you look at it for any length of time, you just see so many minute little different colours within it. And that's something that I love in Southern California. 2016, my mum died and she lived just outside of Belfast and I was going backwards and forwards a few times just in the last years of her life and eventually my, my, my mother died in January 2016 and I cleared out her apartment and one of the things I found was a little gift bag and inside the gift bag was a baby size iron sweater. So in America, an iron sweater would be called cable knit, but in Ireland and Scotland, it's, it's an iron sweater, A-R-A-N. My mother knit every single day of her life until maybe the last two weeks. So just constant click, 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 click was the soundscape of my growing up. So I find this little baby uh, sweater with a little bit of pink along, along the back. She would always put a little bit of coloured wool on the back to tell people what was the back and what was the front. And I brought it home thinking I'll send it to the first great niece or nephew that is born. And, which, and, I, and I did that, but I had it for a couple of years. And I was in bed one night looking at the iron and I was looking at my work on the wall in the background and a penny dropped. And it's just so shocking to me that I didn't see it before, but. I could see the connection between my work and my mum's work. So my mum was working with unbleached wool, iron wool, making functional little sweaters with relief patterns that were traditional. I'm working with unbleached cotton and I'm cutting it and sewing it together to make relief. And mine is non-traditional. It's on the wall, it's got it doesn't have a practical function. Um, and there's just such a strong connection that I was sort of so excited when I saw it, but I was just shocked that I hadn't seen it earlier. And I've always wondered if my mum saw it because she always took a lot of interest in what I was doing. She would have been too humble to say, your work's just like mine. <laughs> she wouldn't have done that. Yeah, so I did a series, immediately after that I did a series called the Aran series, which was making six pieces, 60 inches by 60, so five foot by five, and they all had a um, multiple scale of relief within them. So some, some of my work will just have one, one scale of relief or one pattern throughout the whole thing. With this I purposely made uh, three at least scales of relief pattern within them to, to uh, honour the iron sweater concept and, um, and I named all six of them after female women in her family. So I named one after her, Betty. There's Betty, Marion and Jane, Ivy and Sissy and there must be one other. There's another. <laughs> The work that's on the walls at this moment in time is double layered and I've really loved the way that Megan has performed with it. Hi, my name is Megan Lowe, she, her pronouns. I am a dancer, choreographer, performer, aerialist, singer-songwriter, filmmaker, teacher, and administrator of Chinese and Irish descent, primarily making dance art in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is situated on Ramaytush Ohlone lands. My creative 
illustrations through Megan Lowe dances explore complex identities and experiences by tackling unusual physical situations and coming up with compelling solutions that kind of open up the imagination to what's possible. My passion is creating movement that is site-specific and site-responsive and that really kind of address what's going on in a space, um, both physically and historically. Uh, I love climbing and falling and folding into floors and walls and windows, stairs, ladders, ledges, edges, and bodies really kind of exploring the laws of physics. I grew up here for the first 18 years of my life in Los Angeles County. Since then, I've been living in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, very much immersed in the dance community there, but I'm also constantly coming back to LA to visit family and LA will always be a big part of my life and it's been fun to begin creating artistic relationships as an adult with folks and artists who are living in LA. That's uh, what makes this collaboration really exciting for me. As a choreographer of color and of Chinese descent, um, my creative work very much highlights Asian American Pacific Islander experiences. It's a very important part of what I do. On February 2022, I participated as a panelist in a conversation on the intersection of art making and um, AAPI identity and representation. In positive response to the stances I took as a Chinese Irish artist, uh, I was reached out to um, by the Irish consulate to start a discussion on the intersections of the Irish diaspora here in the US and AAPI communities. I really love making new connections with artists and I'm really grateful that Shifra and the Consulate General of Ireland uh, brought me together with such fabulous artists, musician Emer and fabric sculptor Mary, to have this kind of spontaneous collaboration. I feel like that's kind of like the soul of this project. It's the magic of just sharing space together and creating together and kind of taking out the pretense and the preciousness of art making and just really allowing for new discovery to happen. I've said magical already, but it, that's kind of how it feels. We were able to come together and make something with just like three Zoom meetings and like one moment in the space before coming in and filming and coming up with an arc and dancing and music. It's like all kind of swirling around each other with like, kind of like in an organic way, in a not a super effortful way, and things are just like sparking and letting take form and shape. And so I'm really grateful to have started these relationships and I'm excited to continue them. And I look forward to future collaborations. Seven. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Emer Kinsella. I'm from Dublin, Ireland. I live here in Los Angeles and I'm a violinist, composer, musical innovator. I write music for film and TV, uh, respond to moving images, and I also create my own experiential concert experiences for community connection. 
and having a creative conversation. What I enjoy is finding unusual locations and bringing audiences and musicians and artists into an unknown space and exploring that together, which is what I'm here today also to do with Megan. And this is a great experience to just explore this new space, interacting with uh, the art and the textiles and uh, creating music in this environment. Well, as a kid, I started playing the violin at the age of two years old and had the trajectory as, as a violinist uh, for my, most of my life. And then I left Ireland to go study in London. I moved around Europe and took influences from all different places that I've lived and studied in. And I found my, myself um, in Vienna, which is a great city for music. And there I started a brand new master's in arts as urban innovation. We had to come up with our own strategies and solutions for urban environments and what we can do artistically. And that really sparked my interest in working with spaces that don't usually have um, music performed at that location. So after that experience that led me to um, wanting to move more into film scoring and that's how I, I spent a summer in New York visiting my sister who happened to be on her J01 visa for a year in New York and I started just researching different film music programs in the States and that led me to uh, applying to Columbia College Chicago which I received a full scholarship to come over to the States and study film scoring here. As a kid I always had um, a love for American culture and American sports and um, Watching film and TV shows and media had such an impact on me growing up, wound itself into my creative language. So I ended up moving to Chicago and that led to me moving to LA. And um, yeah, kind of intersecting American culture into what I do as an artist. I like working with experimental and eclectic sounds in, in my writing. My own musical style is quite uh, minimalist and neoclassical and has a, a hybrid mix of electronics and strings. Taking my background um, as an Irish musician and all the influences that I've gathered along my experiences, as well as um, artists such as Philip Glass. Uh, when I watched the film The Hours, that was one of the primary reasons why I wanted to write music for film because that music had such an impact on me. As a violinist, I like to use the organicness of my instrument to come up with ideas. And that's also part of my body is I've played since the age of two years old. And that's been like part of kind of my essence most of my life. And now writing film scores also on the computer with other elements and synthetic elements, I like to bring that together with the or organicness of a live string instrument. What I really enjoy is constructing musical ideas out of concepts and stories. And we had a conversation with Chiva about um, poetry and the poems of Ivan Boland and specifically Anna Liffey, the, the poem. Uh, which I found a lot of um, visual imagery to work with in this project, which is, is part of uh, how we constructed our conversation. And a lot of it is, is to do with uh, the body and how that's like water and the river and the ocean. Specifically looking at the poem, the body is a source, there is a time for it. They're always en route to their own nothingness. So it's feeling like the movement is with the dance and violin, how we move through space and have our own journeys over time. Having a voice um, and bringing our voices together collectively is how we can expand as communities and bring our cultures together.
Thank you.